blood, sweat, and tears. Those are the three things you're absolutely guaranteed when it comes to the Battle of Alberta. We will go through all of the blood, all of the sweat, all of the tears, and some of the most important series in Battle of Alberta history on today's episode of Locked On Oilers. Your Locked On Oilers, your daily podcast on the Edmonton Oilers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome back to Locked on Oilers podcast. I'm your host and former Oilers game day producer, Brett Holden. Thank you so much for tuning in today. On today's episode, yes, we talked about the blood, we talked about the sweat, we talked about the tears, and we're going to talk about it even more as the history of Battle of Alberta playoff hockey is among us. We're going to go through three of the most important series in Battle of Alberta history, the 1991 series, the 1986 series, the first time and only time so far the uh, Calgary Flames have beat the Edmonton Oilers in the playoffs, and 1984, the striking similarities between the 1984 series and this 2022 series. So we will get into that and so much more on today's episode of Locked On Oilers. Thank you so much for making Locked On Oilers your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you find your podcast. Plus, we're here on YouTube as well. Hello, YouTube. Good to see you. I'm happy to see you. Anyways, let's get into this episode as 1991 has probably been a year or a phrase or a word that has been said to you more often than it ever has in your life. Unless you were born in 1991, let's get real here. But 1991 has been the last time the Edmonton Oilers and the Calgary Flames played each other in the playoffs. (laughs) Very important year. I'm not saying that because I was born that year, because I was five years before I was born. But it was a very important year for not only the Oilers and the Flames, but it was a very important year when it came to... I'm sorry, Oilers fans, but I'm going to say it. Theo Fleury. Yeah, remember that name? If you don't exactly know what I'm talking about already, well, you might be a little too young. But... Theo Fleury, that 1991 series is quite famous for the Theo Fleury slide from the Oilers end all the way into the Flames end at, hmm, this is this is a name that I haven't thought about in years, Northlands Coliseum. Yes, in game six of the 1991 series, Theo Fleury won in overtime for the Flames and he slid across the ice all the way across the logos at center ice forcing a Game 7 in Calgary. And that was the last time, well, the Game 7 that Theo Fleury forced, excuse me, that Game 7 was the last time that we saw an Edmonton Oilers and Calgary Flames playoff game. 1991. 31 years, if I'm doing the math right, and I went to art school twice, so that probably isn't a great omen. But over 30 years was the last time that the Edmonton Oilers and the Calgary Flames played against each other. And in that game, despite the fact that Theo Fleury was able to pull off that goal in Edmonton, so many people remember. I mean, I, I'm an Edmonton Oilers. I have been an Edmonton Oilers fan since I was... <laughs> We we little I was born an Edmonton Oilers fan. I was I was born into probably one of the most hardcore Oilers families there is. But I remember growing up and watching just for whatever reason TSM throwing up the 10 best celebrations for like 30 minutes, however you do that. But they I just remember consistently seeing that goal celebration throughout my childhood. I just remember falling up in in some sort of anger or envy that the fact that the Flames were able to do that in Edmonton on home ice for the Oilers. Well, (laughs) Essa Tiekman, as uh, many people don't remember because Theo Fleury's goal was so memorable, what a lot of people don't remember is that Essa Tiekman took the Edmonton Oilers, an Edmonton Oilers team that wasn't exactly expected to win that series at all. 
he won it in game seven in Calgary in overtime as almost a little, hey, how's it going? Whatever you can do, I can do better, Theo. And the Oilers would move on to face the Los Angeles Kings in that year, the Wayne Gretzky's Los Angeles Kings, in fact. And they would go on to beat those LA Kings, only to lose to the Minnesota North Stars in the Smythe Division Finals. Yes, the Smythe Division Finals. Smythe, yeah. Every time I wrote down Smythe for my uh, notes today, I did write Smith, like S-M-Y-T-H, so shout out Ryan Smith. But... In that Smythe division, the Flames finished over the Oilers in that season. They finished with 100 points that actually would end up causing this first round series between the Oilers and the Flames. And they were the favorites going into that series. The Edmonton Oilers that year were 37, 37, and 6. It was their worst record in 10 years years in a decade basically since the Edmonton Oilers had joined the NHL from the WHA a lot of people had the Oilers down and out in that series and rightfully so the Oilers were just it was as I already mentioned the worst season since they basically came into the league but it was the worst season that the Oilers had since they traded Wayne Gretzky yes I mentioned that they would go on to face Wayne Gretzky in the second round with the LA Kings but it was the third time that the Edmonton Oilers were in the playoffs since the trade I don't really have to elaborate much more on what exactly the trade is but since the trade it was the third time the Edmonton Oilers were in the Stanley Cup playoffs without Wayne Gretzky. The first time the Oilers were in the playoffs, they would go on to lose against LA in the first round for the first time since the early 80s. Again, basically since the Oilers came into the league. It was probably the first time that the Oilers actually were in the playoffs. It was the first time that the Oilers were eliminated in the first round since the early 80s against Wayne Gretzky's uh, uh, LA Kings that year. Isn't that kind of weird how that year the Oilers went into Los Angeles and lost? And then in 1991, the Oilers would go on to face the Flames first and win, and then would go on to face the Kings and win. Anyways, that is that is not at all the, the thing I want to get out of this. But also the following year, despite the first round exit, the Edmonton Oilers went on to win the Stanley Cup, their first and only cup the Oilers had won had, and have won, won, have, have won? Have one. That's the right words. I swear I went to <laughs> an art school. But it is the first time that the Oilers had won a Stanley Cup and have won since Wayne Gretzky had left the team. Then going into the following year in 1991, the Oilers were not favored at all to win. However, they did. However, they did. And I know uh, going into this series tomorrow against the Flames, as an Oilers fan, and we will have a little bit more with the Flame Locked On Flames show as well on tomorrow's episode and just uh, talk a little bit more about what to expect in this series. But the Oilers are not the favorites at all in this series. Let's be real. Let's stri strip everything away. The Oilers are far from the favorites in this series. A lot of people have the Flames in all three uh, uh, categories, in forwards, in, in defense, in goaltending. They might have the advantage in all three. But just because the Oilers don't on paper have a chance doesn't mean, well, excuse me, on paper they don't have a chance. But that doesn't mean that on the ice they don't. So uh, the weird thing is about that statement is that that is the exact same statement that a lot of people were saying in 1984 when the Oilers and the Flames would go on to play in one of their most famous series as well. But something interesting that the Flames had to go through, the Oilers are currently going through in their playoff push. What is that? I'll tell you in just a second, but first I want to tell you about our partners built at built or built bar, excuse me, at built as I just want you to imagine for a second, just close your eyes and imagine dipping your finger in a plastic tub of birthday cake frosting and then opening your eyes and realizing 
that it was only 150 calories and 16 grams of protein. That is exactly what you're getting with the new birthday cake puffs from Built. I just received my new uh, order from Built and their birthday puff. Oh my goodness. I am telling you, they are unbelievable. Go and get yours today. I can't promise you that they're actually going to be there tomorrow. They are so far and away unbelievable. I'm sorry. I just I just got my shipment the other day and they are to die for. If you haven't tried the puffs, let me in on let let me let you in, excuse me, on a little secret cuz that's what friends do. It is real marshmallow covered in 100% real chocolate. Yes, 100% real chocolate with 150 calories, 16 grams of protein, and only 9 grams of sugar. This limited time offer is an amazing option for you if you're looking for a healthy way to get some variety into your day. Uh, all Built Puffs are, con as I mentioned, contain 100% real chocolate. That means you can actually eat healthy and not have to, and, and actually enjoy it. You don't have to sit there and eat the boring old healthy food, the green food, all the, the supplements and all that stuff. Plus, Built has is made with a whole bunch of collagen protein, which your body absorbs so much more efficiently and provides tons of health benefits. Go to Built.com and use the promo code LOCKED15. Yes, that is code LOCKED15. One five to get 15% off your next order at built.com. Let's move into 1984s. We're moving back in time from 1991. I know we're getting even farther back <laughs> over 10 years before I was born, before any of the, probably the Edmonton Oilers were born, but. Well, 40, I'm doing the math for Mike Smith. I mean, he might have been born then. But the Edmonton Oilers and the Calgary Flames went into the 1984 series with not a whole bunch of expectations. It was one of the first few times that the Edmonton Oilers and the Calgary Flames actually played each other in the playoffs. And the LA Kings, excuse me, the LA Kings, the Calgary Flames were going into that series with 13 straight losses to the Edmonton Oilers that included the, the regular season and the playoffs. 13 straight. Plus, the Oilers had won four straight at the new, well, I was going to call it the Pengrove Saddle Dome. That was, that was what I always called it. But uh, they won four straight at the Saddle Dome, and it seemed like the Oilers were just going to run through the flames. Sounds kind of familiar. It doesn't seem like the Oilers are necessarily in this year. Uh, the Oilers are going to give a little bit of a fight to the uh, Calgary Flames. But no matter who you ask, as we already mentioned, the Flames are the favorites in this series. In, in the 2022 series, not in the 1984 series. But the Flames are the favorites in the 2022 series. In 1984, the Edmonton Oilers were. And it seemed like there was just nothing the Flames could do in 1984 that they could actually end up making uh, the next round of the playoffs and eliminating the Edmonton Oilers, who so many of the Flames had just gone out there and said, you know what, their coach, Badger Bob, went out there and said, you know what, like we can play well against every other team except for the Edmonton Oilers. I, I just, I don't get it. But it was Lanny McDonald who went out on in the press and said, you know what? We just need to figure out our first periods. We need to have a good start. And then we'll actually, we'll, we'll, we'll have, we'll at least keep ourselves in this fight. We'll, we'll have those next two periods to fight. Doesn't, doesn't that sound kind of familiar? <laughs> I mean, I sat here every single night after every game and said to you guys that the most important thing that the Oilers need to do is to get a healthy start, get a good start. That's all you need to do. Score the first goal. Make sure you are in it when the second period comes around. And that is exactly what the Flames in 1984 felt. They felt, you know what, yeah, we play well against every other team in the league, but we can't play well against the Oilers. Well, it kind of feels like the 2022 Oilers can play well against every other team in the league except for the Calgary Flames. 
Hmm. That's odd. In 1984, the Edmonton Oilers won game one, as so many people did eventually expect. And even the Flames did get off to the start that they wanted. But Kevin Lowe had said going into that game that basically every game they had played against the Flames, it was basically 2 nothing or 3 nothing in every game. That That's not a recipe for success for the Flames. But... The Flames took the uh, game took game 2, excuse me, when the Edmonton Oilers blew a 4 to 1 lead in game 2. Uh Edmonton coach uh Edmonton Oilers coach Glenn Sather would say that day, "Well, I expected something to go wrong. I thought something would go wrong." And I I thought, "Why why would he say that?" It was Friday the 13th <laughs> that day. The Edmonton Oilers and the Flames played on a Friday the 13th. And the Edmonton Oilers thought something would go wrong. And it did. Eventually, the Edmonton Oilers would go on to take a 3-1 to one lead in that series, like it, so many of these series had gone through. But the Edmonton Oilers would blow that 3-1 to one lead. It would go to seven games. And when they got to that seventh game, Wayne Gretzky would go on to say in, in the press, he felt kind of sick. The legs just weren't underneath him. But as he said, that was the most critical. I I wanted to make sure I got the wording of that right. He said, that was the most critical game of my career. It wasn't even a Stanley Cup final. It wasn't wasn't even the the semifinal. It wasn't even the quarterfinals. Excuse me. It wasn't even the conference finals, I should say. It was... A game against the uh, uh, Calgary Flames. It shows just how important these games are against the Calgary Flames, no matter what. And what happened in Game 7? The Edmonton Oilers would go on to win 7-4 to four in that Game 7. The Edmonton Oilers, or the Calgary Flames, excuse me, realized that in that series, they had no chance. They had no chance on paper. Everybody told them that they they couldn't do it. But they went out there and said, hey, let's win that first period and we might have a chance. And they did. They cut down a 14 14 games because they did end up losing game one. 14 straight games the Calgary Flames lost to the Edmonton Oilers. And honestly, most people would probably sit there and just go, oh, well, guess we're losing again. Guess, guess, guess we bottled it again. Move on to the next one. No, every Calgary Flames player in there said, hey, let's go win the first period, and then we'll see what happens after that. And they took it to seven games. Now, what happens in the seventh game? It's the seventh game. But so many of them said, all we wanted to do was to make it that it all that mattered was one last game. They just wanted one last game. One game that just put the season on the line. And the Edmonton Oilers in 2022 have not had the best start. They have lost the game in the first period in so many games against the LA Kings. And if they go into the series against the Calgary Flames, uh, the exact same thing will happen and the Oilers will lose. If the Oilers go into the Calgary Flames series not being ready for that first puck drop, for the first horn, for the f- first period, the Edmonton Oilers will lose the game in, or lose the series in four games. Four games. It will be just as easy as that. But if the Edmonton Oilers do go into that series, into the uh, series against the Flames tomorrow night, with the mentality that we just need to win the first period, the Edmonton Oilers will do just fine. Another interesting note while I, I was doing my research, obviously I wasn't there. Uh, so I have to go and look at all these secondhand accounts and watch the old games and all that type of stuff. But I was doing my research on the 1984 series and I came across an interesting little blurb from Terry Jones, uh, from, from a Terry Jones, excuse me, article in the Edmonton Sun from 2014, I believe this was. Uh, I will confirm that in just a second. But this these were the last couple of sentences in Terry Jones's article in this uh, in this article, excuse me. One thing everybody believed is that the Battle of Alberta had been born. There's going to be a rivalry now for sure, said Gretzky. Nobody mentioned it that night, but there was more to that story. The dying words of a 12-year-old boy came into play. 
Todd, a friend of Glenn Sather's son, Shannon, died of leukemia. Just before his death, he told his mother, tell Mr. Sather for the Oilers to win because I will be watching them from heaven. Sather went on to tell the team before the game and the Oilers would win 7-4. to four. Wayne Gretzky would say that was the most critical game of his career. It is not only the most critical game for the Edmonton Oilers and the Edmonton Oilers players and the hockey players that are out there. It is the most critical game for Edmonton Oilers fans and Calgary Flames fans. This means more to people than the Oilers will ever even conceptualize. And going into the series tomorrow night against the LA or against the Calgary Flames, excuse me, means just that. We will see just how much the Edmonton Oilers do have that little flair underneath them. Of course, uh, the reason why I wanted to bring that up was the uh, that 1984 series has had a lot of of uh, imagery or or mirrors a lot of the 2022 series between the Oilers and the Flames. And what that really brings to my mind is Ben Stelter. So Ben, I hope, I hope, I hope you're at see uh, the second series or series, excuse me, the second round of the NHL playoffs in the Battle of Alberta. Because boy, you deserve it. I hope you are there. Let's go into the 1986 series where the Edmonton Oilers actually lost for the first time against the Calgary Flames. We will get into that in just a second, but first. Our partners at Bet Online continue to be the number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all the latest odds, news, and sports developments, including this year's NHL hockey second round playoffs, baby. Yeah, those are coming out right away. Major League Baseball is also in full swing. Plus, the NFL schedule just came out. So the NFL futures are out now. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sporting wages information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet online where the game starts. And where we are going to end as I reach for my notes. As I mentioned, I was not around in the 1980s, okay? I know I, I'm older than some of my friends, and so they call me the old boy. And I feel I'm almost 30, so I feel that. But uh, I wasn't around in the 80s, so I had to do a lot of research and take a lot of notes, okay? And in 1986, it was the first time that the Edmonton Oilers had lost to the Calgary Flames in the playoffs. It was the only time, only, only, so far, so far. I'm sorry, I know there may be some Flames fans out here, so I will say so far, because I'm sure they will be the first ones to click in the, the comments saying, oh, they're going to win the series. Anyways, uh, it seems to be kind of, uh, I'm, I'm not from Calgary, I haven't lived in Calgary ever, but it seems like April 30th seems to be kind of a holiday for Calgarians, as uh, it was, as I mentioned, it was the Smythe Division Finals for the uh, Flames that they did win. And this series, <laughs> if you uh, if you don't know already, <laughs> is quite famous for probably the lowest moment in Oilers history, probably the biggest blunder or biggest blooper in Oilers history, as Steve Smith, five minutes into the third period of Game 7 in Edmonton, would bounce the puck off of Grant Fuhrer's leg into the net. Yeah, yeah. Just re keep replaying that in your mind, Oilers fans. I'm seeing it right now. Not only in my head, but also to the right of me as Sportsnet plays it uh, repeatedly for the X amount of the, probably the hundredth time today. 
the Edmonton Oilers, probably the lowest moment in Oilers history as Steve Smith bounced it off of Grant Fuhrer's leg as the uh, Calgary Flames would go on to take the lead and eventually win the game in Game 7 to move on to the 1986 Stanley Cup Finals. It was very, uh, it was remembered, excuse me, for a lot of Oilers fans because it prevented the Oilers from potentially winning the third, their third straight Stanley Cup. Their third straight Stanley Cup. And Steve Smith bounced it off Grant Fuhr and the, the, the Calgary Flames would go on to win that, uh, that series. And if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure that was the only time the Calgary Flames would go on to win the Stanley Cup. In 1986, and Lanny McDonald's big, 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 big mustache. And the only reason why I say uh, I think so because again, I, I haven't grown up in Calgary, and that seems to be another uh, anniversary as well. The weird thing is, is something that I kind of wanted to bring up as well, and I'm sure if you are uh, familiar with the story of Steve Smith, this is something. This is nothing new to you, excuse me. But Steve Smith would then go on to continue his career. Obviously, it wasn't the end of his career. They weren't just, get him out of here. But he would go on to continue his career and eventually become the captain of the Calgary Flames in 1999-2000. Uh, excuse me? Uh, that's kind of weird. That's a, that's a little suspect, Steve. Huh? You, you got something to hide there, Steve? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, of course he didn't take money on the side. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm, of course I'm kidding. But that series and that game, it was very reminiscent of one of the lowest moments in Edmonton Oilers history. And it has been the only time the Calgary Flames have beat the Oilers in the playoffs. So take your pick. Which one's actually the lowest point? The Flames winning or Steve Smith putting it in? Either way, <laughs> we mentioned the blood, sweat, and tears. There's a very famous photo of Steve Smith going through that uh, line, just wiping away tears. And uh, honestly, I'm going to be, I'll be 100% honest with you. When I was telling you that story about Todd, uh, uh, Glenn Sather's daughter's friend, <laughs> I was holding back tears. I, I This is a very emotional series for not only the players, but also the fans. And this means so much to the city of Edmonton and the city of Calgary. Edmonton Oilers fans and the few Calgary Flames fans that may have actually tuned into this uh, episode. <laughs> let's have a fun time. Let's, let's, let's just enjoy it. Let's just enjoy it for the first time in many people's lives. For the first time since 1991, the Edmonton Oilers and the Calgary Flames play each other in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Tomorrow we will have Jess from uh, Locked on Kings. Excuse me, not Locked on Kings. Jess from Locked on Flames. I keep, I'm transitioning from saying the Kings to the Flames every day. So <laughs> excuse me while I, I hash out those last few things but we will have Jess on from Locked on Flames to talk a little bit more about this series as the Edmonton Oilers and the Calgary Flames play each other tomorrow night 7 30 is when it says the puck is gonna drop let's be real it's probably gonna be eight o'clock that is when the Edmonton Oilers and the Calgary Flames will play in Calgary tomorrow night thank you so much everybody for tuning in and thank you so much for making locked on oilers your first listen every day as i choke back a frog in my throat for your next uh listen make sure you tune in to locked on nhl from first round matchups to each and every kiss on the stanley cup locked on nhl <coughs> excuse me locked on nhl covers the playoffs like no other hear the latest news and opinions from local experts every monday to friday it is free and available wherever you find your podcast and they're on youtube as well if you're on youtube hello thank you so much for tuning in i'm so sorry for having to joke up that frog at the end of the episode but i shall see you tomorrow i hope everybody stays safe and enjoys the last tuesday before the battle of alberta strikes again baby we'll see you soon